Okay, let's talk about n equations. We only have one true steadfast rule in math, and that's an n, and that is you cannot divide by zero. Remember, if you divide by zero, an alternate universe is going to implode and this little guy's head is gonna go up in flames. Every time we commit that atrocity, it is bad. We have broken every law known to man about math that is absolutely unacceptable. So remember, three over X cannot equal three over zero. So once you start having variables below a fraction bar, you and I are going to have to start restricting domain values. So how are we going to restrict these values? The only thing we have to worry about is the denominator. So remember, x minus h, that can never equal zero because we don't want our sick man's figure to head to go up in flames. So let's just solve just like we would solve a regular equation. This is called an n equation because, of course, it's not equal. We're going to move the h to the other side. So what does this mean? x cannot equal h. So our domain is restricted. Let's talk about the k value. So if you notice at the top, I have a 1. And that is a constant. It's never going to change. It's constantly going to be a 1. If it's constantly going to be a 1, then I in no way, shape, or form could ever have this term right here equal 0. Remember, I can't have any 0 in the denominator. 1 is 1. I can't turn that into a 0. So now you are going to restrict your domain. So remember that part right here, there's no way it could equal zero. So zero plus k is going to equal the range. Go ahead and take a look at what that is. So remember, remember we are solving an inequality here. So our range can never just equal the k value. Let me show you an example with a couple of numbers. So what we've got right here is the parent reciprocal function, and we're going to talk more about this later. But right now, let's just focus on what the domain cannot be. So if I focus on what the domain cannot be, you certainly cannot have a zero in the denominator. But what about the range? What about f of x? So let's go back to the numerator. Again, the numerator is constant, so there's in no way, shape, or form that that is ever going to change into a zero. So if there's no way I can change that, then f of x, which are your y values, can also. Okay, so let's kind of review another activity or another equation. So let's jump into something like this. You're going to be graphing this, but for now, let's just kind of analyze. You got a variable in a denominator, so you're going to have to restrict what x cannot equal. So when we move forward to the other side, we know that x cannot equal a positive 4. Also, remember that number 1 is constant. There is no way that you can force this equation to equal 0. So if you cannot ever force that equation to, or I'm sorry, not equation, fraction. If there is no way for me to turn that fraction into 0, then there is no way that f of x is just going to equal whatever the k value is, because this is impossible. So let's take a look at just one more, and let's pretend we have this. Today we're talking about what x and y cannot equal. Tomorrow you're graphing that. So remember, underneath the fraction bar, I know that x cannot equal a positive 2. I also know, since there's just no possible way that that fraction can equal 0, then there is no possible way f of x or your y is ever going to equal a 6. These are restrictions. These are restrictions algebraically. 
What we have not talked about is how to show these restrictions on a graph. And on a graph, these restrictions have two things. Or I'm sorry, these restrictions can be two separate things. First of all, they can be an asymptote. Or they can be an actual hole, a jump in the graph. This, save that for later. We're talking about that, but we're not talking about that soon. We are totally talking about this. Asymptotes are like boundaries. They're not like boundaries. They are boundaries. And what that's going to mean is if I tried to sketch this, and I'll just go ahead and do this real quick, Again, you don't have to worry about the graph part because you and I are going to do the graph part later, but I'm just going to give you a little preview. So remember, we just said that x cannot equal a positive 2, and f of x, or y, cannot equal a positive 6. So let's say that x equals 2. That's like, let's say it's right here. And then y is never going to equal a positive 6, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's where y equals 6. But remember, that's what they cannot equal. So an asymptote is a dotted line when we graph it. It's a dashed line because it is a boundary. So I have a boundary right there at y equals 6. I have another boundary all the way up and down forever and ever and ever at x equals 2. So tomorrow, you and I are going to see that we are actually going to create a graph that has branches. This graph is going to have a piece up here, and then remember it's blocked off. So then it's going to pick up down here. And I'll talk more about that. But this and all of our work that we've been doing algebraically, we're going to put it all together and talk about the graphical boundaries that happen when you have variables in the denominator, so not equals zero.